In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly add authentication to your Next.js application using the Auth0 Next.js SDK. Trying to create your own custom authentication is a pain. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Auth0 makes it super simple to authenticate users using email and password login or social account logins like Google, Twitter, GitHub, and others. Well, thanks to Auth0 for sponsoring this video. We're going to jump right in. There are only five steps. Now, for reference, the instructions are on the GitHub repo linked in the description below. First thing that we'll need to do is sign up for an Auth0 account if you don't already have one. It's completely free. They have a very generous free tier. So once you've logged in, this is your dashboard. We can create a new application. So we'll just name this Next.js Demo. And this is going to, going to be a regular web application. You might think because Next.js is based off of React that you would select a single page web application, but Next.js is kind of in between. It's considered a regular web application because it can use some server side scripts. So we'll hit create. And then there's some quick starts here, but we're just going to go over to the settings. And there's two things that we need to add here. So when we scroll down, you'll see allowed callback URLs. So we're going to enter localhost 3000 slash API slash auth slash callback. This is going to be the URL that we're going to allow Auth0 to redirect us back to after we've logged in. In production, you'd want to change this localhost 3000 to whatever your .com is. And the other thing we need to add is allowed logout URLs. And that is just going to be localhost 3000 right now. So scroll all the way down to the bottom and save changes. And that's all we need to do right now in Auth0. Now let's go over to VS Code and I have a blank project folder open here. I'm going to start with a standard Next.js app. So we're going to say npx create next app and dot, which we'll install in this current directory. I'll speed this up for time. All right, now we just need to install the Auth0 Next.js package. So npm i at auth0 slash next.js dash auth0. All right, that's all of the installation. For the third step, we're going to add an environmental variable file. So let's add a new file in the root. It's going to be .env.local. And we're going to add some environmental variables in here. So we're going to have an auth0 secret. And this is a long random value. And we can enter any value we want here. Um, but in the GitHub repository, there's a nice little code snippet that we can run. And it's a node script. So we'll just run this and it's going to give us a long random string. So we'll copy that and we'll put that here. The next thing is going to be our base URL. Right now it's localhost 3000, so that's good. Next is our auth0 issuer base URL. And we can get that from our dashboard. So let's go back to the auth0 dashboard. And that's going to be this domain right here. So we'll copy that. And so that's right here. We need the HTTPS. Let's replace the rest of it after that. And then for the client ID, we'll go back and here's our client ID. Let's paste that in here. And then your client secret. Again, back here, client secret. We'll copy that. And this secret is very secret. Don't let anyone else see it. I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to delete this application after this video. So I'm not worried about you seeing it. So let's save that. You know, be sure that your env files are in your git ignore. We see here in our git ignore file that env files are in here. And just in case you don't have a dot local or a dot development, and let's say you just have a dot env, you might want to add that as well because you never want these files to get uploaded to GitHub. So you'll notice here that this file is grayed out as well as the node modules. So those will never get uploaded to GitHub. All right, so let's save that and close it. The fourth step is to create our API routes for logging in, logging out, and our callback. We can do that with just one file. So in Next.js, we have pages and then API. Within API, we're going to create a route of auth and then a catch all file. So it's brackets dot 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 auth zero, close out our brackets dot JS. So this is basically like a slug. So if we do uh, slash API slash auth slash login, that will work. Log out will work. Callback will work. So this is a catch all route. Now in here, there's very little that we need to put. We're just going to import our handle auth 
from the Auth0 package and then export that handle auth. Very simple. Now the fifth and final step is to go to our app.js file and we're going to wrap this with our user provider, which we're going to get from our Auth0 package. So that's going to be our user provider from our Auth0 package. So we'll take this and we're going to wrap our return here. And we're going to wrap that with our user provider. And that is all of the setup needed to make authentication work in Next.js. But now how do we use it? Let's see. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and let's do npm run dev and start our, our dev server. It's going to run on localhost 3000. All right, so here's our application up and running. We're at localhost 3000. If we go to slash API slash auth zero slash login, then we should be redirected to our auth zero login. This is the default styling of the auth zero login page. You can customize this uh, in your auth zero dashboard. So we can log in with Google or our username and password. So we can either log in or sign up and we'll use Google. And then it's going to ask if we want to authorize this application. All right, so we're logged in, but how do we know that we're logged in? Well, we'll need to use a custom hook from the Auth0 Next.js SDK. So back into VS Code, let's go over to our pages and then index.js. The hook that we're going to use is use user. And that comes from the Auth0 Next.js SDK. And to use this in our function, we'll create a const and we're going to destructure this. There's several things that we can pull out. We're going to pull out user, error, and is loading. And that is going to come from the use user hook. So let's just go ahead and console log uh, the user and see what we get. All right, let's save that and go back to our application. And let's pull up the terminal. And you can see here that we already have our user here. So let's make this a little bit bigger. So you see all of my information I logged in with Google. There's my email, full name, nickname, picture, and the sub is our Auth0 user identifier. So it's like the user ID. So it tells us in the first part how we authenticated. We used Google. And then the second part is a random ID assigned to me. So let's add some logic to show a, a login button when there is no user and a logout button when there is. So let's get rid of this console log. So we're going to say if user, then we want to return and we're going to return. We're going to have a fragment. So inside the fragment, let's put an H1 and we'll say welcome. And we're going to use the user here. So we'll say user.name. And then after that, let's put a, a link. And we'll add in our href here. And that's going to go to slash API slash auth slash log out. So we have a user, so we want to be able to log out. So we'll say log out here. So if we have our user, then we're going to have our log out button. And if we don't, then we'll just return link href is going to equal slash api slash auth slash login and then that is going to say login all right and then the rest of this uh, default return here we're just going to get rid of that all right so here is our entire function we have our user if we have a user we're going to welcome the user and display a logout button if we don't have a user, then we're just going to display a login button. All right, so let's save that and go back to our application. And there we go. Welcome, log out. So let's go ahead and log out. Now we can log back in. And let's log in with Google. And there we go. We're logged back in. Now, just to add to the user experience, let's do something with this error and the is loading. So we'll say if is loading then return a div 
and we'll just say loading. And then if we have an error, then return the div, and we'll just put in our error dot message. All right, so that way if we are loading, we'll display something to the user, and if there's an error, we'll let them know that as well. And what if we have a page that we want to protect? Maybe we have some content on our site that is members only. So let's create a quick members only page and see how to protect it. So let's go back go in our pages. Let's add a new file. We're going to add it into a new directory as well. So it's going to be members only slash index.js. So let's go ahead and create a component here. I have a snippet library installed. Uh, what is it? React or ES7 React Redux all of that snippets. So let's go ahead and rename index. We'll rename this to uh, members. And then in here, let's just put an H1. And we'll say members only. All right, so now I have this new page. Let's go ahead and go back to our application. All right, so right now I'm not logged in. So I have a login button. So let's go to flash members only and i'm able to access this site right now even though i'm not logged in so to protect this route is super easy all right so all we have to do is import with page auth required and that is going to come from our auth0 nextjs sdk and the only thing that we need to do with that is pass it into our get server side props so we're going to say export const get server side props and that's going to equal with page auth required and that is all that we have to do let's save that and go back to our application I now I just refreshed and it's prompting me to log in let me show you that one more time we'll go to localhost 3000 I'm not logged in now let's go to slash members only and now it's not allowing me to access it without logging in. So let's go ahead and log in. And now I'm able to access it. And we can also just as easily protect our API routes. We don't want people to be able to anonymously use our API routes and some of our routes we only want certain users to be able to access. So let's create a fake API route. We'll go back into our API under pages, API, and let's create a new page and we'll call it secret.js. So in here, just like we had the with page auth required, we also have a with API auth required. So the only difference this time is instead of using our get server side props method, we're going to wrap our API function with this with API auth required function. So we're going to say export default with API auth required. And then within this, we'll have our normal function. So we'll say function secret route. We have our request and our response. Now this function is only going to run when we're authenticated. Let's also get our session. So get session, and that's gonna come from our auth0 next.js SDK. So now we're gonna create a const of session is going to equal get session. And we're going to pass in here our request and our response. And then from this, we can get our user. So we'll say const user equals session dot user. So now here we can go ahead with our normal code for whatever it is we're using this API for. And we know that we have an authenticated user. If you want to learn how to use Auth0 with just plain React, go check out the video that I made on that as well. And give Auth0 a try on your next project. Hope this video was helpful. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.